Welcome everybody to True Exact Show. We are coming fresh off of the divisional round and we are going to do a recap on it. We are going to preview the championship weekend, which is, you know, some of the funnest football of the year. Some of the best teams, probably the four best actually this time around, I think at least. But we're going to pass it around. Say hello to big time Tim Sicoria. How you doing? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I must apologize. Mm -hmm. For what? Lamar Jackson is the MVP. <laughs> well done. As you're boasting a 2-5 and five record, which we'll get to to our picks. Uh, seems like you're winning the first Saturday game and just going straight downhill from there. Like that uh, fiddler from The Price is Right on the Mountain. That you're Star laying guy. Starting out hot, Scotty. <laughs> Starting out hot. What can I say? Exactly. Nas Hundo, Mr. SGP, the same game parlay kid. How you doing, man? What's going on, man? Lamar is that guy. Still don't know what that means. Got to catch up on these young kid lingo out here. I don't know what him or her, himothy or that guy means, but eh, it is what it is. Sir, once again, seems like we're in a familiar territory. Seven out of the last 12 years with you in the championship game. How you doing, man? Man, we're still here, brother. We're still here. Just two more dubs and it's celebration time. Oh, and one more loss and it's... The Great Depression. Hold now, on, if sir. anybody's <laughs> wondering, I am rocking a Reptar fitted from the Rugrats. And if you've seen the movie Necessary Unnecessary Roughness, it's a Texas State Paul Blake Armadillo's jersey God. from like 1990. <laughs> so I'm really going old school there. I figure uh, a couple weeks till oh. football's over, might as well wear a jersey. And my Kansas Jayhawk sweater is in the wash. So we're going to pass it on to the winner here. I want to start with him because I think he has some in-depth analysis. We're going to start with the Niner Packer game review of this. And, uh, sir, go on. How'd you feel watching the game? Uh, some takeaways. Um, it didn't start off too good. You know what I'm saying? I, I tell you, that weather, that, that rain brought, brought to this. Uh, all the games, that offense, for some reason, like when it's, the weather's not uh, shining or they're not indoors, they, they tend to struggle a little bit. They struggled this year against, against Cleveland. They struggled last year against the Bears in a monsoon. Brock came out to start the game. He was wearing a glove. He couldn't get a, the right feel of the ball. But hey, he, he took the he took the glove off and then started doing his started doing his thing. I, I heard uh Michael Irvin was talking. Some quarterbacks can't throw in the rain. Apparently Troy Aikman, he said whenever it was rain, he couldn't he couldn't perform to his uh up to his uh potential. So mm. but hey, they 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 uh they got down early or they got down. You know, they got a little little break and then when, when they need to be the drive, I told you. Scott, you asked last week, which quarterback do you want mm -hmm. for a game-winning drive? I said the Brock star. Y'all left. Mm -hmm. the, Brock, he drove down. He scored. Jordan Love had a chance to, to drive down. What happened? Yeah, I don't care. Jordan Love's still better than Brock Purdy. But hey, I digress. You, you asked the question, who would I you did. want in a game-winning drive? I, and I did they not get for the answer. They were both in that situation. Right. You know, Brock, Brock did his thing. Jordan Love turned it over. Brock made an amazing throw on that one over the in between the three yeah, people. To, to Connolly. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, he didn't play that well. But we'll, I'll get. I'll but, get hey, but, say, but the, I said I, I think it had a lot to do with the with the rain. I'm saying last I checked this weekend, there's no rain in the forecast. They make the big game. There, there'll be no rain. So let's let's see what happens the rest of, going the rest of the way. But hey, I'm just I'm glad to get you know get that W. And another thing, they said, oh, Brock can't make a comeback. He whenever he's down in the fourth quarter, he can't come back. He came back. What now? What now? What are the haters going to say? Listen, fourth quarter comebacks and all that stuff. You could skew these stats to make it seem like you know a fourth quarter comeback. If you're down by one point and the fourth quarter starts and you're at the goal line and you run it in, that counts as a fourth quarter comeback. So like all these say, stats are bullshit. Just watch the game. But it, it makes say, all I heard. This, I know. All I heard before that game was Brock. Brock, you can't, can't come back. You can't come back. When they were down, he made the throws he needed to make. So Speak, speaking of making sure. throws, Scott, what the fuck was Jordan Love doing on that uh, yeah, game? That's a, that's game what we ceiling call a, pick. That's what we call a growing pain. If you no, ask the, me, what what are the number one sins as a quarterback? You never throw across your body to the opposite of the field. Right, yeah, to the middle of anywhere. It just yeah. he, and, and he did play a good game. I, yeah, I, yeah, he played for good all good. intents and yeah. purposes. That was like his one mistake. It just yeah. happened to be. The green one was picking it off. Red Warner was picking it off right behind him. So yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Nas, your take on the Packer game? <clears throat> if San Fran is playing Sunday without Debo, they're in trouble. Hmm. Interesting. I don't feel that way. Why do you say that? You don't think Brock could handle it without him? 
Nah. I, I just feel like Detroit is just different, man. And the, uh, San Francisco run off of Debo, running the ball, passing the ball, blocking, et cetera. I just feel like without him, they're in big trouble. Hmm. Uh, I kind of agree with you on that. We'll get to me, though. Uh, what do you feel well, res- about... Res- res- you know? Respectfully, uh, I, just, I don't think... I mean, Debo is a, is a big part of it, but it's, I think more Trent Williams is more of the bigger part of the offense. Where, like, when, cause yeah. the three games that they lost in the middle of the season, tr- big Trent didn't play. He's probably the best left tackle in football. So when he, you know, he pretty much locks down that left side of the line. So I think he's more of a big part than Debo. But I mean, Debo is a is a is a key part. So, right? so you're saying that your quarterback has the best left tackle, the best running back, the best tight end, and a top five receiver. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, he's so important. Tim, your take on it. A lot. Last time I said football was a team <laughs> game, right? I, I will. I will say it's it. It was a lot closer than I anticipated uh-huh. it being. I mean, if Sir saying the weather had something to do with it, then yeah, I think Debo getting hurt in the first quarter and how they played mm-hmm. after that because yeah. he was on pace to put up some big numbers. And I fucking hate this guy because he was in <laughs> all of my part. All right, shout out to DraftKings for giving me some of my bets back. Yeah. God damn, man, I got kicked right in the pants. It's almost Listen. worse than that fucking Lamar Jackson guy. <laughs> I'll say this if you watch the game now. Uh, I had the Packers plus nine and a half. I uh, I thought they were gonna win the game in the fourth quarter. I actually did. When they got in field goal range, if Carlson makes that kick, I don't think they lose that game. I, I just don't. I don't know. I, to me, that takes the whole like air back into the stadium. You you just know as a fan, we've all been there. Like in, in any sport, the NBA, you're up eleven. All of a sudden, there's a six zero run. Your guy turn. It, that's what it felt. That swing, just like oh boy, the Packers are in trouble here. Um, that being said, Brock Purdy, he got away with about five or six balls that should have been intercepted. Hey, no, I'll, I'll give you that. Like, 100%. that the ball that hit like, him right in the chest. Hey, not even okay. that one though, man. When he was under duress, he was throwing balls. In between, like four Packers, just and they just happened not to be in the right spot. Now, whether he was doing that on purpose, I don't know, but he did not look good. But he made the drive when it mattered. I guess he's the Brock star, like you said. Um, I think what bothers me is I don't think he's that good, and I see him get so pumped, like he thinks he's the reason. And I'm watching him, it's like, <laughs> oh, you have a good team. Stop! But I would do it too. It's hard not to root for him. It's just the Niners have been a thorn in. My side, the Packers side. So you're that like evil empire right now in the NFC. So it's like I want you to suffer. <laughs> yeah, I've suffered enough, big guy. Come on, let, let me get one, big bro. <laughs> I say, but you, Jimmy, you, you got, you got there. You've had two chances already, and you blew them both. You know, you should have won that Ravens one. You were up by like twenty one, and the lights went out. But whatever. So, I've seen a stat. Uh, I've seen a we, stat. We, we were down 21 in the last one. Off. Down 21. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. I've seen a stat earlier this week where it said, with without Debo on the field, the 49ers are 8-9. and nine. Mm. So, I mean, That's, you can that. take that how you want it. But. Okay, well, this year, three of those games were without Trent. So. <laughs> well, who's is he playing, though, sir? Is Debo well, playing or no? He, he practiced today. I mean, it's honestly, like he's, he practiced today, so we'll see. I, mean, I want like, him to play. I mean, like I, I, I would, I would be surprised if he didn't play. If he does play, you know it's going to be like a decoy. Because yeah, I, but still, I, don't but, under, I mean, maybe like a week. But the way they say they they were saying that his shoulder was hurt doesn't sound like something that was going to be a one week fix, and he'd be a hundred percent. He, he well, gonna put a was he going to put a brace on? I mean, he he says that the pain is not as bad as it would have because it happened earlier in the season. He said it's not as bad. Like the feeling is not as bad as as before. So, Motherfucker I mean, also hasn't uh, got hit yet, sir. Right? Yeah, no, no. I'm just I, saying no. But it, but I'm talking about the feeling is still the same after it happens. Like he said, it, it hurt before. It doesn't hurt as bad now. So I said I, again, I would be surprised if he didn't play. And if he plays, he'll like, just be out there with just with you know when when they walk out with the boombox dude and like just him being out there. That that team like that they feed off of him. Mm, that's what I'm gonna do this year at the courts. Now is just walk up with a boombox. It'll be great. <laughs> I don't. I just gotta get D batteries. I don't. I don't know if I have them anymore. They, right. they still sell them. Don't worry, Scott. We're not oh, that old. Good. Yeah, but I don't have a boombox. That's the problem. 
So maybe I should bring that Nickelodeon boombox from when we were kids. Remember that one? The Slimer one? All right. So, no, congratulations, sir. Good luck this Thanks. week. Nas, we're going to go back to the other Saturday game. And it's your boy, Lamar Jackson, who you've had nothing but nice things to say for, say about, whereas somebody on this podcast has nothing but mean things to say about him. Any other two up top here, we're kind of indifferent. We like them, but we have our questions. Nas, speak about the game. Lamar Jackson, what'd you learn? He's that guy. That guy again. Jesus Christ, I hate it. It was it went into halftime, right? Mm -hmm. Score was ten to ten. Yes. And what happened? The Texans turned into the what they they should have been. Okay, you can talk all the defense, <laughs> the defense, all the defense stopped and defense did that. Right. But Lamar put on his pants, pause, and went right. to work. I, also, I, bef going go into on. the half, go on, Tim. the Texans missed the field goal, and I feel like that deflated them more than anything that happened in the second half. And I didn't 100%. watch. I didn't watch the second half because I was at a fire call. So all I did, I it was ten ten. I get back from the call. We had a little car fire in town, and all of a sudden, I looked at, I turned the TV on. It's thirty four to. I said, "What the hell happened?" Well, uh, and he didn't. Fair. He didn't play well in the first no, half. No, he, didn't he didn't play didn't well play at all. all. No, no, he played exactly the way that I thought he was going to play. But I but think, he, well, you know, get the first half he got his feet back under him. He he slowed down a little bit, and he did what he needed to do to win. Yeah. Right. He took the game over with his legs, pretty much. You know? Yes. Listen, let's be honest. He couldn't lose that game. I, I mean, like that would have been bad. Yeah, that like we all knew. We all know, and this is the problem. The standard we hold these quarterbacks to is like he won but that's not the game he has to win this is the game he has to win coming up if he wants to cement his legacy and it, it took till Peyton Manning we'll get to the next game but that's kind of the same thing but Lamar's got to win this game I got a up. question though and now I have he a could question. lose 34 31 and it, it's not his fault you know so like it's it's all it, it all depends how they lose Go. Quick question. So yeah. you you just you guys just said this was the game he wasn't supposed to lose, right? Yes. So why is there a problem that he won this game? No, I didn't say it was a problem. It's just you don't you can't like you can't give him that like status of like okay he's there because he had he he should have won that game. Like you, can, it's almost like how Dak lost to the Packers. That's a big step back because he should have won that game. That was like okay. you can't lose that game, type thing. So, and, let, me, let me ask you a question. Right if if yeah. Lamar plays like he did in the first half this Sunday, do you think the score is ten ten? No. Well, that defense, that Ravens defense, is crazy. So no, they, we saying, don't know. You, dude, I'm just saying though. Do you think it's ten ten? Because I don't. No. I don't think it's going to be. I don't no, think it's going to be ten to ten at the first at, at, at halftime if he plays like that, like th this Sunday. He needs okay, to play a so lot better. What if he comes out in the second half and does what he did last week? Oh, then he's does good. He win that game. He might win. Maybe I don't know. Depends on depends on what KC team shows up. Yeah, and listen, I got. I think see, the nuts, I think the problem is you misinterpret. And you, I get it because you are a big Lamar fan, and I think you do hear a lot of hate on him, unwarranted, because he does nothing but win. Uh, like, there's no knock on that. But there is a generation of, like, people who still consider him, like, a new age quarterback. And it, it's, it's like, can he climb the pocket on a third and 15 when the game's on the line? Like a Patrick Mahomes, like a Josh Allen, like a, a any elite quarterback who's ever played. Can he climb that pocket when they need him to make that in route and make that fucking throw? No, he probably can. But chances are, as this competition gets harder, that run game will get taken away. And now you he's sure? going to be just... If, if not, then I give him all the credit in the world. I'll give him all the credit in the world. And if he wins on his legs, that's fine, too. But you got to go do it. You okay, so questions. Yeah. So what's his reputation? What's his repetition if he goes and beats Patrick Mahomes? Because to it, people, it, Patrick it's Mahomes very, is it puts, him, it puts him over Josh Allen. In my because opinion, he beat Patrick Mahomes. Yes, because it's something Josh in, in, a, in a big, in a big game. Beating Patrick Mahomes is tough. That, Dude, Josh that's Allen. like beating Brady, man. It's a hundred percent. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, but okay. how does he beat him? Like you, you, you know, you can win thirteen to ten, and it's not 
Mahomes versus Jackson. Like, I hate that too. Like, they say Patrick Mahomes is three and one versus Lamar Jackson. No, they're not. The Chiefs are three and one versus the Ravens. Like, it sometimes the quarterback has nothing to do with it. You know just, what I mean? So, just like when Trent Dilfer won a right Super but, Bowl, uh, he he didn't do diddly dick. The that defense carried them, and that's yeah. okay. Eli Manning did the same thing. Guess what? Eli Manning threw a cut like two good passes, and and they won. Lamar is better than Trent Dilfer, though. He's way better. Come on. Okay. Sure. So, when if Lamar if Lamar beats Patrick Mahomes on Sunday, is he in your top five? Probably in my top five right now, but I'm still Wait, hating. Right now. All t- you're talking about current, right? <laughs> yeah, current. No, right now, like right. Yeah, yeah right. it's hard to I mean, argue even, it. I think, I think he's top five, even even without beating Patrick Mahomes. I think he's top yeah, it's, five. Yeah, it's hard to argue it. It's just it, it, it's just. Did you not hear me not last to- week? He's my MVP. God, come yeah. on, man. Are you, are you even paying attention <laughs> it's hard, to the podcast? Man. It's tricky. It's tricky. And I think you hear and and this you hear a lot of hate on these shows you watch too, Nods. This is probably why you probably get exhausted from it. Because like you hear the same stuff. And it, it's it's a hard thing to explain. But like it's I think like me, sir, and Tim are on the same page with it, even though we think he's great. He's a great athlete, great player. Is he a great thrower of the football? Now, you might not need that to win. I mean, like, Kaepernick got there without being a great thrower of the football. You know, Michael Vick was never an elite passing quarterback, um, but they won. So if he wins a Super Bowl, you could throw all that shit out the fucking window, and I'll sit here, I'll be the first one to be like, okay. But Scott, (laughs) there's something to it, too, right? Because I feel like him and Jalen Hurts are very comparable, right? Mm -hmm. They're both very, very good runners. Can they throw the ball? Yeah. Yeah. Does the run set up the pass to make it a lot easier for them? Absolutely. I don't know in like a guaranteed shootout. Like if Patrick Mahomes goes off and just starts throwing a ball around and they score quick, I like don't know. 21-7, and then yeah, you see if Lamar can keep up. The, I don't it might never it might not ever get to that because the, the Ravens are a complete team. They're very right, good. Right, right. They're, there's a reason why they're the number one seed there. And of course that's and to be honest you, with you, the Ravens are probably the best front running team in the football. Hey, you go ahead. They, they they have a lead and they just and they just run away from you. Whereas like coming like as you said like you know from behind. I think even last year if if you got to them early, they they were in trouble. But if they got up to a lead to start, they would run away from you. They're, they're kind of the same way with Flacco too. I, I mean, let's be honest. They were the same type of team. They've been that team for 15, 20 years, like the, the Steelers kind of. You their know, coach and hasn't changed. They have a great so. coach, but Lamar is. But to answer your question, I was like, he is. I mean, yeah, he's top five right now. I, like, I think Dak's a better thrower of the football, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't take Dak over Lamar. I just couldn't do that. Like, I just couldn't do it. But that's not saying he's a better quarterback. Lamar's earned his MVP. He's earned all his accolades. And I think he gets hate, sadly, because he's a black running quarterback. If you if you want to hear it like that, that's just what it is. He probably gets more hate than he deserves because of that. And sadly, hey, he, that's just where we are. He gets wins. Apparently, people hate quarterback that win. Yeah, like t- Jimmy G, right? But like Brock Purdy, goddamn. <laughs> he gets all but he gets Jimmy G, goddamn. All right, we'll move on to Nas. No, for your sake, I hope he does win, though, so you could show up to the courts next year and talk your shit. I'm looking forward to that. Move I've on been to- saying it since July. <laughs> you have. I can't deny that. Lions versus Bucks. Uh, even though, like, the Lions, you want to see win, and it wasn't a snooze fest game, there still wasn't much juice going on. In it, and God bless Baker Mayfield. He had a good year. Uh, Jared Goff, who honestly, I you want to see me like you thought I tra- I don't trash Lamar, but I feel the same way about Goff. I don't think he's that good. I don't, but he wins. Like there's something about him. It's like I don't trust him either, but he wins, and he might get to his second Super Bowl, which is absurd. But you know, good for the Lions, man. Um, now the Cowboys and Commanders share. That horrible stat of being the longest teams in the NFC not to reach not to reach a conference championship. <laughs> um, but the Bucks, uh, that's a good year for them. Seriously, everyone had them at like four wins. Mayfield had a good year. Horrible division, but they still got it done. And also, I would have went for two. I know that people were saying not to at thirty one twenty three. I like that call. So, uh, Tim, go. I told you, baby. Detroit Super Bowl. It's and happening. Then, I, unfortunately, uh, Josh Allen fucked me. But that's okay. I'm not here nor there. Uh, D- Detroit has a very interesting offense where they can score throwing the ball or they can score running the ball. 
they got receivers out of the backfield. Uh, they're going to be a hard team to stop. I know, sir, your Niner defense is very good. It's going to be an interesting game on Sunday. Or yeah, they play the, the night game on Sunday. Yep, yeah. six thirty. Yeah. yeah, don't worry, yeah. sir. We'll be we'll be doing some shots together for sure. I mean, sir might be passed out by then. No, no, <laughs> no, sir, be wide awake. <laughs> nah, I'll be good. Don't worry, don't you worry about it, old boy. All right, Nas, all right. you've been riding with the Lions too, same as Tim. Your take from the game? <laughs> uh, I think the Lions play play pretty well. Jamar Gibbs is running the football effectively. Defense did what they had to do to win, and again, Jared Goff. What he had to do to win. I know it's 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 like it's weird, but you know what? Good for them. Dan Campbell, awesome coach, sir. You scared or not? I'll I'll, I'll say my piece about. I'll say more about the Lions later on. But no, nah, like I said, I told you it was going to be a high scoring game, and in, in that building, points are scored. So yeah, I mean, like it kind of the game kind of went how I thought it would go. So you know, hey, good good for the Lions, good for their fans. A lot of you know there was a lot of crying people in the, in the crowd during the game, you know, after the game. So good for good for them. Yeah, good for them. Unless you're, oh, I know. Yo, but the t- Table Bay, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see what they do this year because they, now that they got to pay Baker, they got to right. resign Mike Evans. They got a lot of question marks. Like I believe they they lost like, their, their offensive coordinator. So that's now that's, Baker's got to do with another. Now he's gonna do another coordinator. So that's a huge thing. And that guy from is like the quarterback whisperer. He just makes decent quarterbacks better. Like he had Geno Smith. Yeah, hey, Baker. So, yeah, I'm intrigued so, to see how they look. But if, yeah, I mean, if, they, no, the Table balled out. You know what I'm saying? They just. Baker picked, and, and then Baker flew too many uh, questionable passes late, late in the game. So if you're I in never fantasy, my... if you're in fantasy next, sorry Scott, if you're in fantasy oh, next no. year, Carolina, Whatever. Get, I... get 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 them late. I maybe, never maybe, thought... maybe they'll make Bryce Young better than C.J. Stroud. They they oh, win. God. Uh, listen, he's not going to be as good, but he's not going to be no, as awful as he was this year. No. John Tamingo to you know, so some receivers there I, make I, them I all better. It. I can safely say I never thought when I was nine years old, that was the last time the Cowboys went to the Super Bowl. I never thought I'd be sitting here and the Bengals got the one and there's a chance the Lions get the one before the Cowboys got back. I would have like I would have put my house on that. Like I like you know what I mean? I never would have thought that. Never it's, never bet your house, Scott. Come on. No, now. but like you know, I would have thought not, not you recommended. Were, I thought you would have been crazy if you came from the future and told me that. But uh, that should be interesting. Now to the game of the week that we had. Bills, Chiefs. Oh, my God. Oh, Naj, you're too young to remember. Most of us are, but we grew up watching the highlights of Scott Norwood. We're at wide rate on a 2019 loss in the Super Bowl. And wide rate again from Tyler Bass, who apparently was good all year, you know? Really? Um, but Naj, touch on this one first because you mentioned something earlier that you were bashing stuff on <laughs> Diggs. Josh Allen throws a ball to Stephon Diggs on second and nine. We're having a different conversation. But, no, nah, I think the Chiefs came out, played well. We talked about Travis Kelsey last week. He was due. Everybody was saying he was due. He came out, scored two touchdowns. Defense has been playing out, lights out all season and in the playoffs. Pacheco is running the ball well on the road. I think that's yeah. a big win for him. It's definitely huge, sir. Well, one thing, can I say on a side note, I want to party with Jason, Jason Kelsey. Because that brother looked like he was having a good old time during that game, bro. Like, you know, p- chugging beers, shirt off, all in the crowd. Like, and you know it was cold, so. Get like, your damn oh. shirt on, sir. And it's like, oh, no, I'm going to take my shirt off. I'll take my shirt off. But, yo, he seemed like he would be a good time to party with. But, no, nah, I mean, as, as I said, Josh Allen needed to win that game. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's ever going to beat the Mahomes in a big game because that was yeah. his time. The, the Chiefs the Chiefs have, have had a down year, and they're still the AFC Championship. That's that goes. That shows you how good Mahomes is. Like, yeah, it's like I said uh, last week in uh, boxing. You can't win on a decision. You got to knock the champ out. Yeah, and man. and they tried to just jab, jab, jab instead mm-hmm. of going for that knockout punch. And there's Mahomes just once again <laughs> there. And we saw another white guy with no shirt on. That's two weeks in a row in the freezing cold weather, <laughs> which seems to be a thing now because we're fucking stupid and we'll walk our dogs in shorts during a blizzard. Um. <laughs> Yeah, what do I got to say? Just, he kind of felt for the Bills fans a little bit, but at the same time, when I went up there for the Cowboy game, I might have met wrong fans. A lot of them were kind of jerks, so I'm kind of happy. Nah, as you went up for a Bills-Patriot game, how'd you feel about the Bills fans? Nah, I didn't go up there. I was joking. 
when oh, I said, shit. When I well, that. I did, and they were kind of <laughs> jerks. So I'll stand by that. I'm kind of happy. I hope some of them that were jerks were the ones crying in the stands. Uh, but um, I, 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 feel, I feel bad for those Bills fans. But let, me, let me go through some tough breaks. So, as, as yourself, like, come on, like, four straight bowls and losing, and now they, this, they feel like this is their year, and now wide right, like... Listen, if you go to four straight Super Bowls and don't win one, you almost don't deserve to go back. I- I'm sorry. Like, you couldn't win one by accident? Like, seriously. <laughs> still like, hand him out. Still <laughs> hand him out. <laughs> Yo, they, they, they wasn't in line. Like, oh, I'm next. And especially after you get there from coming back down 35 to 3 versus the Oilers with a backup Frank Reich. Like, you, like, if you don't do it then, it's never going to fucking happen. Uh, yeah. But that's it for that game. Tim. What do you feel about that game? Are you a Josh Allen guy still, or you were also yeah. proven wrong on that because you said not only would you not take Lamar, the guy you would take over Patrick Mahomes is Josh Allen with a chance to win the game, and oh. he underthrew Just Shaq Kerr in I the understand. end zone. I understand. Okay. That's an ugly, ugly misthrow. A hundred percent. Everyone had those in every game. There was always a, a an accidental, you know, slipped out of your hand. You threw it too high. You you. you, you yeah, it's awful. It's awful to look at. I, I'd, I'd still have Josh Allen on my team. I'd still have him over yes. Lamar. I don't. I, I literally don't care. It. He didn't right. miss the. He didn't miss the field goal to to bring it over. He didn't do that, right? If they make the field goal, the whole scenario of what the game was is completely different. So, before we shoot down Josh, Allen, of course, now hear me out. I'll play play devil's advocate. Don't leave it up to be a field goal game, right? Don't sure. don't put the pressure on your quarter uh, on your kicker. You as a quarterback, you got to be better. If you make the throw you're supposed to make at that time, you win the game. You basically play almost a perfect game in your eyes to win the game. You, you miss one throw, miss the, and now it's you know ultimately, uh, yeah, sure you can blame him. It's his fault, but it's a, I, I don't think so. Well, I, also, I, too, let's touch on how dumb the fake punt was. Oh yeah, yeah. What like, I don't even we, know. Doing. It's, it's like out coaching <laughs> yourself. Like, oh, because we're playing Kansas City, now we have to pull all the tricks out of the bag. Like, no, how about you play the way you played the whole fucking season? Like, yeah, I, that, it's it's it, like you're trying to be too too cute. Like, don't... but Kansas City did have ten players on the field on that right, play, so I guess they seen something. Oh, yeah, you, you don't do that, that obviously. Risk, yeah, man. Nah. And and if McCall Hartman doesn't fumble that out of the end zone, we're probably looking at a forty-one twenty-four final. That game never even gets close again. If Kansas City gets up. So it's almost like the the Chiefs were giving them every chance to win this game. Like, here's another chance. Here's another chance. And they just they just kept stalling. Like, like mm-hmm. every time they just kept, all right, we get to the 50. Fuck. We got a punt. We get to the 40. Ah, holding penalty. Sack. Got a punt. It just it, it just didn't look right for them. But um I don't I, I you know, I don't I don't think that Buffalo is gonna just disappear though. No, I mean no. You still have Josh. You, you still have James Clay. You still have a good core team. I mean, it, it sucks. I don't know what happened to Stefan Diggs. He got I, like, old quick. Yeah. He got old quick. I, is that what it is? I, yeah, I, think, I, he just, I think something. I think it's something more than that. I think he's yeah, like, yeah, in, in I the beginning too. of the season. They were t- like, uh, not as his, his brother was talking, but like, yo, get number fourteen out of there. I think something's going on behind yeah. the scenes that they that they Sha- saying. Shakir is getting more target, has more targets and yards than Stefan Diggs. Like, are we serious yeah. right now? Mm. Yeah. Uh, nothing Steph- makes nothing makes sense, and they still almost won the game. Like that's uh, it's it's crazy. But we'll find out soon because off season fireworks happen. Yeah, so. A lot a lot of moves are gonna be made in Buffalo this year. So he's going to Dallas. I don't <laughs> um, I don't want him. I'd rather just draft the receiver rather than pay one. We got a pair of quarterback, maybe. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's get to our pick segment then. Tim two and five as he won one and three last week, sir. One and three last week, four and three. Scott, myself, two and two, four and three as well. Nas, three and one, sitting at a six and one record as the newbie, which means we'll start for with you this week. And I don't want you buying down points. You're going by our <laughs> spread or our over and under. So we're going to start with the AFC game. The Chiefs and Ravens. The Chiefs are plus three and a half, over under 51. What are you doing, Nas? So on my way to work today, I was listening to ESPN New, like the radio, and I heard Lamar say something real strange. He oh, said, "44 is the over, by the way." Sorry, 44. Sorry 44. about that. I had him mixed up. My bad. Yeah, it's all good. He said, 
if you want to be the champion, you got to go through the champion. So give me Ravens money line. Wow. All right. So, but are you taking a minus three and a half? I got to know that. No, nah, no, nah, just a money line. I need you to take. We can't buy down. Yeah. No, nah, because that you're taking the that Chiefs half. plus three and a half. Then. Okay. You know what? Give me Baltimore three and a half. There you go. Last week he changed <laughs> it and he won because of it. Yeah, Knowing your me, gut, you're taking Baltimore three and a half. We don't do yeah. money line when it's a favorite, Nas. It's too easy. Sir, uh, yeah. sir on to you. Uh, I said, I told you last week, Like I, I, I thought Josh Allen needed to win that game, but Bentley gets Mahomes as an underdog. He's, now he's 9-1-1 as an underdog, but I still, I don't trust either side, so give me the over 44 and a half. <laughs> you, tell, you telling me I get a Lamar. Yo, Lamar's been putting up like each week of at least 20 to 30 points every week. And I get him a home for offense. Right. Come on now, give, give me them points, 44 and a half. Like, I think the key part of this game is going to be KC's ability to try to try to stop the run. Because KC ranks 27th in run defense. And what, and what does Baltimore do? They run the football. So if they can th- sort of contain him a little bit, which he's said than done. But just, I think, give me them points, 44 and a half. I think it's going to be a, a back and forth game. Because still, Mahomes is tough to knock out. Well, you said over. What do you think the final is going to be? 27 24, something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, something like that. Like 27 24. All right. Well, last week I said I had two rules. If you get Alabama as a plus buddy, you take them. And when you have the best player in the world, and when it's all said and done, the best player we will ever see play the game in our lifetime, probably when his career is over with, if he's not there already, talent wise, he will be there. You take Patrick Mahomes until you knock them out. I, I can't go against them. I will not take the Chiefs money line, though. I will bet them on the side money line because you have Mahomes at a plus 160 right now. Think about that. If you ever Have you ever had a Tom Brady at a plus 160 that you can remember? The best player in the world. No. You take that and run with it and take your chances. I'm taking the Chiefs a plus three and a half. Even if they lose, it's a field goal. 30-27. And I'm not yeah, going over and under. Oh, I'm not going thing. over and under because last week I lost because of a pointless field goal by Justin Tucker. What uh, one thing uh, uh, that I saw is how often do you see Mahomes get blown out? Uh, really I happen? can't even remember the Super it, Bowl, it, it, thirty-one to nine. That's like the last <coughs> yeah, time ever. But very rarely does it happen that he gets that he gets run, you know, run out the gym or run, run off the hard. field. It's it's hard. It doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, it's going to be tough to knock him out, you know. It is, and it might happen, but until it does, I'm sticking with the Chiefs plus three and a half. Tim, go. Do I get to pick two picks so, so far behind? I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So go. <laughs> all right, first of all, fuck off. Second of all, my MVP, Lamar Jackson. I told you guys last week Lamar's MVP. Uh-oh, he's going to jinx him, Nas. I told you guys the MVP. <laughs> Give me... Baltimore minus three and a half. Oh, it's over. My Ravens. My, look at me. Chiefs. Look at me. Baltimore. My Ravens. That he, he's, gonna, he's gonna run all over him. He's gonna throw all over him. He's an MVP. And pencil in the pencil in the Chiefs in the Super Bowl right now. And so, oh, absolutely not. My Ravens. And give me over forty-four and a half. Baltimore last five games average thirty-two and a half points a game. Kansas City average. 21 points a game. That's 53. They're playing against each other. Fireworks. I'm with you, sir. Oh, well, that's not good news for sir or the Ravens. Looks like I'll be the only one walking out of here with a victory in that game with the money line because Tim's might. been a real mush this year. All right. So uh, I have Kansas City in the Super Bowl. You guys have the Ravens. Sir's kind of undecided. And uh, we will move to Sir's game. The NFC Championship in San Francisco, where the Detroit Lions will be traveling to go there. Nas will go to you again. The line is minus seven. No hook for the Niners in the over 51. That's right. Right, sir? 51? Mm-hmm. Yep, okay. Yep. So go on, Nas. Uh, give me the Lions plus seven. Okay. I think if San Fran do win this game with or without Debo, it's it won't be a blowout. Like it, I think they'll cover that seven. I just feel like Jet, like that Lions team, they have they have gelled together to play under Dan Campbell, and this is what they've been waiting for. They, it, this is the time. I don't think they should come up. If they do come up short, it won't be bad. Okay, so that's give me fair. Lions plus seven, sir. 
<laughs> Do you uh, want to pick this? <laughs> no, I, hold on. I got some stuff to say. Hold on. So, listen. In this game, like, San Fran, they're, they're, they're facing an old foe. You know what I'm saying? Right. They got some history versus Jared Goff. Now, the more I looked into this game, I kept seeing yep. stuff that go, that was, like, making me a little nervous. Because, like, it, Jared Goff's last five, he's 0-5 against the Niners. 227 yards a game, seven touchdowns, five picks. I looked at Jared Goff's home and road split. Listen, the last two games, he's been playing amazing. It's been in Detroit. Last time I checked, this game is not in Detroit. Jared Goff, you got to come outside and play now. You know, this season, 10 home games, 22 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 64.3 QBR. 8 road games, 11 touchdowns, 6 picks, 57 QBR. Not the best. Like, honestly, at home, great quarterback. On the road in the elements, not the best so far. Uh, Again, Detroit has lost 11 straight road playoff games. Mm. That's, That's not the best. Now, you, we keep talking about Jared Goff and, and Purdy. Have y'all seen this Lions defense? Yes. Against, against the pass? No, yeah. Trash. Yeah. Absolute trash. Last week, against against Baker Mayfield, he threw for 349 against them. Mm. Against the Rams, Stafford threw for 367. Week 18, they played in Minnesota, and my man, former Niner, Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins. 396 against them. Week 17 against Dak, 345. Week 16, they played Nick Bones again. We get the point, four, sir. They say. I'm just saying. <laughs> With all that being said, this game is going to be. I, I, I kind of want to pick. I don't want to pick a side because I right now I'm be stressed out during this game. Right. But give me over 51. Listen, Niners ranked third in points per game at 28.9. Detroit is fifth at 27.1. Mm. So, you know, both teams can score, but pe- people are not are not talking about that Niners defense now. They they got some they got some boys on that side. So. It's not going to be as easy for Jared Goff to put up points, but we sh- we'll see Sunday night. So now, I think that the Lions are a lot like the Cowboys. Uh, the road when they're there, when they're on the road, it's just not the same team. I also believe that when you have the number one seed on the ropes, like the Packers did, and you don't knock them out, it's bad news for the team coming in the next week because there's no way they're playing two bad games in a row. They usually have one good game, which I feel will be the Chiefs-Ravens, and then there's normally one blowout. I think this is going to be a fucking blowout. I think that the (laughs) Niners are going to beat the crap out of them. I don't think it's going to be close. I think we'll be chalking it up uh, to watching a Netflix show by 8.15 because it's over and already looking at the Super Bowl line. I think that the Niners win this game 34-10, 34-16, and... uh, I think we're going to have a rematch of the Super Bowl in the 2019-2020 season of the Niners and the Chiefs. So, um, sir, I'd like to wish you an early congratulations. My heart rate thanks you for that because I don't know if I can't be dealing with no 27 You won't have to worry. You won't have to worry. And I think I'd like to congratulate you, sir, on getting to the Super Bowl before the game even begins. Because it's happening. Take it easy, old boy. And you think I'm the jinx. And yeah, I'm the he, jinx. Over he over here trying to push me. Yeah, I, I, have, I have credit for the Jordan Love st- thing still. I'm bu- I built up enough stock. The past you, four years. You, over here, you over here trying to push me. That's what you're doing. <laughs> no, no, no. I truly believe that. I don't think this is going to be a game. I think it's going to be a, a bloodbath. An actual bloodbath. But, uh, Tim, go on. Uh, I. A oh, minus seven. Nine is minus seven. Go on. <laughs> My Detroit Lions. Remember that. Pick them to be in the Super Bowl. They're still here. They're still here. It's true. I don't trust a Niner offense without Debo Samuel. And I'm prefacing these picks because I don't think he's going to play. And if he does play, I think he's just going to be a decoy. Like I said earlier, I don't think he's clearly not going to be 100%. I think one hit, if he gets dropped on his shoulder, I think he's out again. And they're in the the same scenario they were a week ago. Juwan Jennings, though, I I do like him, sir. I, I I, can he is he Debo? No. Can he fill in adequately as a receiver? Absolutely, because Detroit's Detroit's uh, oh, secondary is not the best, right? So, of Juwan Jennings, did, did y'all see that block where he did? I think it was past the kiddo where Juwan Jennings pretty much sent dude into a Gatorade, uh, the Gatorade uh, yes. coolers. Yeah. Like they 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 play they 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 like to they like to block for their people. So okay, and it gets it gets it gets contagious when you see one person do it and they get yeah. praised and then the next person and then yeah. it's just the Warren's always doing it. Ayuk's always like, on McCaffrey runs. You always see right. Ayuk running down the field blocking somebody. Like it's contagious for the run. The, the I, I will I will say though both teams 
have been doing well uh, on defense, stopping other teams from scoring, right? So over under is 51. I'm going to go back to my last five games, right? Lions giving up basically 22 points a game. Niners giving up 22 points a game. That's 44. The under 51. So I'm I'm taking under. So I, I, I'm going to, if you let me have two picks, it's the Lions plus seven, under 44. I think Debo's a, a, a big, big, big loss. Because I even if he does play, I don't think he plays. The one part of this game, though, I, I see a lot of people talking. Is, is it, again, people aren't talking about that Niner defense. Like, yeah, that Niner defense is, is, is something serious. Like, don't, yes. like so, the, so the, the the front four for Detroit's also pretty no, good. That I, guy, I, that guy, Aiden Hutchinson is no, is no. The truth. I'm not, I'm not taking away from the pressure, but yeah, you put the front four, but their back seven is absolute trash. Like, they, as yeah. I said, they give up yards in buckets to everybody. It's much like, the Packers, Brock Hardy. much like the Packers weren't ready to take that next step. I'm not sure the Lions are. I just I don't I don't I don't know I I just think like you think they're gonna get better? We did we did see Aaron Jones just run for a hundred plus on that nine defense. I know. Yeah, but like I said, like I said, that's not gonna happen again. Like you gotta not. In my opinion, you got you had the chance to clip. Just like the Bills had the chance to clip the champs, and it's like you didn't. And now that next game, that's the dangerous game because. You had it like if you have a chance to knock the fucking champ out and you don't connect on the uppercut, he's coming back the next round and he's knocking you out. I just I, I've seen it so much in sports and and I just feel like that's what's gonna happen. I could be wrong. I wouldn't mind seeing the Lions in the Super Bowl. I think that'd be pretty cool. But uh, talking about that run, like yes, I know yes, Aaron Jones did run, but the game was close. If San Fran gets out to say seven nothing, ten nothing lead, Detroit's not running the football anymore. They're gonna be throwing it. Yeah, I and mean, you know what? And, I, and I feel I, 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 like, like, the Tredavis Ward has been locking people down. That linebacking court has been locking tight ends down. Like, you know. Yeah, it's I, I trust my defense. Team. Yeah. I trust my defense yeah, more than I trust the team. defense. But, I don't know. We'll have to hey, see. We'll I find like out Darren. Sunday. Yeah. We'll find out Sunday, and we'll have to eat crow next Thursday. Three of us will. You know what I mean? So, I'll, and I'll it'll be probably be Kim. <laughs> All right, uh, that's our pick. So I have a Chiefs Niners Super Bowl. Uh, Tim, you got a Ravens Lions one, or you think the Lions are cut? Yeah, Ravens Lions. Nas is a Ravens Niner one. I think, or you think the Lions yeah, are yeah, the cover. Yeah, the cover. Yeah, hundred percent. And then we'll leave Sir at a Chiefs Niners and whoever AFC. wins wins. Yeah, there you go. Niners versus the AFC. All right, let's get to our scene game parlay, which I would have won last week if Josh Allen had threw an interception, um, but I didn't. So I'll start with Martin. I'm going to the Kansas City game. It's a plus 2,200. 50 to win 1,100. 25 to win 550. 1,250 <laughs> to win 275. 575. To, I'm over. Uh, that's it. I can't do it anymore. Okay. Kansas City win. Pacheco touchdown. Kelsey touchdown, Rasheed Rice over 58 and a half receiving yards, Kansas City to score 23 over 23 and a half, and a race to 10 points. Kansas City scores first to 10. $50 for 1100 I think that's that nuts. I think the race to 10 is a little, little tricky, but I'm going with that. I'm a big balls guy when it comes to same game parlays. It's probably why I lose them all the time. Tim, what's yours? I'm going to my Detroit Lion and Sirius 49er game. It'll be 1,200. I'm sticking to three legs. I feel like that's the easiest way to win for same gamers. Uh, so when I looked at it, uh, the, the odds might change, right? But they had Detroit at – they had the hook at seven and a half. But for our show, I'll keep it at plus seven. I got Jameer Gibbs over 22 and a half receiving yards. If Sir is right and a, that defense gets after the quarterback – Nothing better than a dump off, and all it takes is one to get twenty three yards if it's set up correctly. And I'm still I'm doubling down on Debo not playing. I got you on Jennings anytime touchdown. Okay, fair enough. What was the odds? It's plus twelve. Okay, that's fifty for six hundred. Uh, twenty five for three hundred. Twelve fifty for one fifty. Uh, six five seventy five for seventy five two, and then we'll ten, go with ten, that. Ten dollars for one hundred and twenty, Scott. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Round number. I don't want to do that, Nas. I'm sure you won't have any odds here, but give us yours. I don't got odds, but I'm going <laughs> it's to. It's not that hard. Just... I'm gonna get him to download the fucking app. 
<laughs> you know we get some free money if you download the fucking DraftKings app. We all get a free. I'll we're make putting a $50, one up again. We're I'll putting a fifty dollar bet again. in. Go, no, right. what do you got? I'm going to the AFC Championship. I'm going Patrick Mahomes to throw two touchdown passes. Over I'm going half. Lamar Jackson. I'm going Lamar Jackson anytime touchdown. And I'm going Lamar Jackson sixty rushing sixty plus rushing yards. I like a plus four fifty. I'll say Yeah, when you when you some gas money for the week. Yeah, unless much. you put three thousand dollars on it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Go, sir. All right, I'm 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 going to the Bay Area. I said, as I as I mentioned before, give me Brock Purdy over two hundred seventy nine and a half uh, passing yards. I mentioned before, Detroit has, has been giving up a lot of yards. Uh, give me Jared Goff to throw interception. San Fran is number one in interceptions. Goff's gonna have to throw it. I, I feel like. Uh, give me George Kittle over sixty one and a half receiving yards, and give me a CMC over hundred all purpose yards. What is it? That's 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 rushing and receiving. Uh, that's that's plus four seventy five. That's, that's not bad. I like that. I should stop going my extreme ones. All right. Well, next time we talk. No, oh, before we go, we are two weeks away from the Super Bowl. We're also two weeks away from the 20th annual Puppy Bowl. And the lineups were announced. We have Team Fluff versus Team Rough. And on Team Fluff, we have Linus, Patrick Mabones, and Snack Prescott, which is awesome. No. And then on, <laughs> on Team no. Rough, we have Striker, Mr. Bean, and Bark Purdy. Oh. <laughs> Sir's got his pick. Also, there'll be a kitty halftime show, and they'll be having a Hall of Fame this year <laughs> with the actual statues of the dogs. So I'm really looking forward to that. Can we bet like, on it? You could probably bet on it. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure. I think one year I bet Fumble won the MVP. So I think he's no. got adopted, and you know, it's really cool. It's all so adorable. It's better to watch than these eight hours of the same fucking wait, pregame show. Wait, Scott, what did you say? The homie's name was what? Bark, uh, Deck, Deck, something. What now? Snack Prescott. All right. Can I make the same game parlay? Can I do uh, a <laughs> Bark, Bark Purdy to, to to throw for yards and Deck yeah. and Deck Prescott to throw a pick? Yeah, probably. He'll fumble a toy. It'll be great. <laughs> there you go. All right, that's it, fellas. Thank you, guys.